In the world of large three-row luxury SUVs, Mercedes-Benz is certainly no stranger to this segment. They were among the first to introduce a vehicle like this all the way back in 2006 with the original GL Class. Now, over the years, this segment has grown particularly hot with new competition from BMW with their X7, Lincoln with the all-new Navigator, and then, of course, the well-established player from Cadillac, the Escalade, which has long been the best seller in this segment. So in response to the new competition, I'm just outside of Park City, Utah with Mercedes-Benz driving this beast. This is the all new 2020 Mercedes-Benz GLS class. Now, if you're wondering where the S came from, that's because Mercedes-Benz actually renamed this car to GLS class back in 2017, where they started referring to this thing as the S class of SUVs. Mercedes-Benz says this is riding on an all new platform. It's larger, it's more spacious on the inside. It's got two all new powertrains, both of which are electrified, an inline straight cylinder engine. And then of course this model, which is the 580, it's got a four liter bi-turbo, twin turbocharged V8 with a 48 volt mild hybrid system. So the big question I want answered, is this all new 2020 GLS class truly the S class of SUVs? That's what we're here to find out. Now, the Mercedes-Benz S-Class has long been the standard when you're comparing large, full-size sedans. So because Americans aren't really buying sedans anymore, they're buying crossovers, Mercedes-Benz wanted to implement that same structure to their largest SUV offering, the GL-Class, which is why it was renamed GLS. Now, if you guys remember the 2017 facelifted model, it wasn't really the S-Class of SUVs because it was based off of the second generation model, which came out back in 2013. It was in desperate need of a complete full redo, which is what this vehicle is. It's the complete redesign of the GLS class that's taking a lot of design influence from the newer Mercedes-Benz products. Now you can see, looking at the front fascia of this all new SUV, you kind of have to squint at it because it doesn't look all that new. In comparison to the BMW X7, the Lincoln Navigator, the look is a little bit restrained. It's a little bit conservative. Even this particular one that I'm showing you, this is the GLS 580 with its four liter twin turbocharged V8, which I'll talk about in just a moment. There's also a GLS 450, which has an inline six cylinder turbocharged straight six cylinder engine. Now looking at the front fascia, this particular one has the AMG Sport package. Now the one thing I like about this newer one, Mercedes-Benz has taken away all of the fake AMG badges that were on an AMG Sport package model. So even though this doesn't have any AMG badges, you'll be able to tell it's a sport package model with the more aggressive front fascia, the piano black trim. It's got some fake grill out, um, intakes uh, on this lower area here, but there are some real ones over here. The headlights, as you can see, they are full LED headlights. They're actually standard equipment. The previous generation, you had to kind of go for a premium package and a lighting package to get the LED headlights. These have, uh, Mercedes-Benz says it has about 112 individual LEDs in each headlight module. So this is gonna light up the road extremely well. It's got adaptive lighting, so it'll turn in the steering or in the bends. It also has LED turn signals, and then it has an LED running light over here, and then an integrated LED fog lights, which are optional, Mercedes-Benz says. Now you can see the grill. This is the AMG specific grill. It's got a relatively large three-pointed star. I actually do like how conservative it is compared to the new X7, which has those really gigantic nostrils or the blinginess of the Lincoln Navigator. This is tastefully restrained, so you'll have to let me know in the comments below if you guys like how restrained Mercedes went or if you kind of wish that they made this thing look a little bit more uh, ostentatious, a little bit more standout-ish. Now at the side profile, this is where you're gonna really see the increased size of this SUV. This is big. This is not quite as long as the longest version of the Mercedes-Benz S-Class, but they did increase the overall length by about three inches. Its wheelbase has been stretched by two and a half inches compared to the previous generation GLS at 123 inches long in the wheelbase. This is about an inch longer than the new X7 and its overall length at 205.2 inches long. That's about three inches longer than the all new X7. So previously the X7 was larger than the GLS. Now Mercedes has taken over uh, to be the, basically the, one of the biggest offerings in the segment. Now looking at the wheel options, oh, this one's gonna be funny because you can take your pick between a 19 inch wheel all the way up to these gigantic 23 inch wheels. That's right, a 23 inch wheel. So all you wrappers out there with the 22s on your Navigator, your Escalade, sorry, but Mercedes-Benz has really one-upped you with the 23 inch wheel. They're wrapped in staggered with tires. These are 285s in the front, 325s in the back. Remember that GLE review that I did uh, a couple months ago? That had 305s in the back. So these are 20 millimeters wider, fatter tires 
in the back, which really gives this thing an imposing stance. Now, one thing about the all new GLS, uh, because it's got an all new platform, it's got a slipperier, sh a slipperier shape. So Mercedes-Benz says the coefficient of drag is now 0.32. That's an improvement of 0.3 over the previous generation. All GLS models will come standard with active aromatic suspension. That's right. So it gives you the ability to raise up the ground clearance between uh, eight inches all the way up to 11 inches that you get uh, basically on the GLE uh, model that I showed you guys. This particular one here also has that magical e-active body control. So it takes the 48 volt mild hybrid system that's on the V8 or the six cylinder, and it gives you the ability to independently control each axle or each um, strut of the vehicle so you can basically uh, move the vehicle around and you can get it unstuck. It's got that free uh, stuck driving mode assist where this car will bounce up and down at speeds up to nine miles an hour to get you stuck from sand. That's a really cool feature which is designed to improve the off-road capability of this vehicle. Now you can see the black wheels with this Designio white diamond metallic paint I think looks fantastic. You have very traditional roof rails here which are a little bit more aerodynamic in its shape. This particular one also has a Pano sunroof which actually the Pano sunroof is standard for 2020 before you had to pay like a pricey you know $1,200 option on the previous generation model and overall from the rest of the side profile here I kind of think it looks a little bit more like a minivan. I think some of the competitors look a little bit more aggressive. I don't really like some of the proportions here where it does kind of look like a van or it kind of just looks like a bloated version of the GLC smaller crossover. From the rear of the new GLS, you can see this is where you're going to notice the most changes versus the previous generation. The taillights have been redesigned. They're full LED design. They're a little bit skinnier versus the previous generation, which were just a little bit more rounded, a little bit larger. They took up more space. I, and overall, I think it's a much cleaner look. It does look like a bigger version of the GLC crossover, which is their bestseller, so it doesn't really surprise me. This particular one, of course, it's the 580. It's got the 580 badge. You can take your pick between the 450 or the 580. An AMG model will be coming at a later date. Now down here at the lower fascia, you can see it's got these nicely integrated uh, dual exhausts which are mounted to the bumper. They're not actually connected to the pipes, but this is the new four liter twin turbo V8. So I'll let you guys hear what that motor sounds like really quick. This motor is kind of a variation of the four liter twin turbo in the AMG products. Of course, it's not hand assembled and it's the first Im implementation of the 48 volt mild hybrid system. It sounds fantastic, if a little bit more muted than I would like. This is definitely not an AMG model or an AMG light model uh, like the 63 would be, which is again coming at a later date. Now opening up the rear tailgate area, a power lift gate is gonna be standard. And because this vehicle is bigger, uh, Mercedes-Benz did increase the cargo capacity with all seats uh, up. Remember a third row seat is standard, you're looking at 17.2 cubic feet of space with the third row and the second row up. If you fold down the third row, which is very easy, you just tap this button over here, um, all the seats are basically electric. So the third row is going to fold flat completely. That expands the cargo capacity to around 42.7 uh, cubic feet. And then this particular one has the seven seat configuration. There's another set of buttons over here. All you have to do is just tap one button that says all. Once you tap the all button, you can see the seats will power fold. This is actually easier to use than the BMW X7 that I reviewed a couple months ago, which was very finicky in the way that the um, all the power folding seats worked. It just didn't always work uh, smoothly all the time like this. Now, when you fold down everything, Mercedes-Benz says you could fit something as long as eight feet in here, uh, which is pretty good. The total cargo capacity is around 84.7 cubic feet. Now, if you're actually comparing this to the previous generation, they reduced the full cargo capacity with everything down by about nine cubic feet. The old one had around 93 cubic feet of space. So that's surprising. But as you can see here, the space is pretty generous. It's very nicely finished in here with very soft plush carpet. There is this good little storage area down here with it looks like a fix-a-flat kit. It's got an inflatable uh, spare tire here with a fix-a-flat inflator kit. So that's pretty nice. But overall, this is pretty good. It's not really any more than what you're gonna get in something like a Chevrolet Traverse or the new Kia Telluride, which I know doesn't really compete in the same space, but that's something to keep in mind if you guys are comparing this to a mainstream brand, if you're wondering where you want whether you wanna spend twice the money here.
So if Mercedes is going to claim that this is the S class of SUVs, let's hop into the new interior of this GLS and see if that's truly the case. Let me first talk about the key fob. This is the newer Mercedes-Benz key fob. Uh, I believe they offer like a display key that's similar to BMWs. This is very uh, much different from the old key. It feels nice and heavy and sturdy. I like that it's made of metal, but there's also some plastic on the key. But uh, the keyless go feature was now standard, whereas previously it was an option. So if you just touch the door handle here, with the key on you, it'll lock the doors and then the mirrors will electrically fold in. If you wanna to touch the back of the door handle, that will unlock the door for you. And then uh, looking at the interior of this new model, you can see, if you guys are familiar with the newer Mercedes-Benz products, like the new GLE that I reviewed, this is pretty similar. The dashboard looks like a carbon copy of the GLE, which is a very good thing because look at those two 12.3-inch uh, displays. They combine to basically make almost a 25-inch display, which is a far huge improvement over the 8-inch display that you got on the previous GLE. Less. The seats, you can see these are the Espresso brown seats. I don't believe these are the upgraded seats that's part of the upgraded Dizinho leather. There would be a Dizinho badge, but these seats are heated and cooled. They're also massaging, and then they, you can adjust them in like 18 different ways. Uh, you can also adjust the passenger seat. You can see Mercedes-Benz puts the seat controls on the door panels. There's lots of leather stitching here. On the upper part of the door panel, there's some beautiful uh, wood grain, which this one doesn't have the um, dark ash wood or, or the matte finish wood like you get on some of the other products, but you can basically custom tailor this interior to your liking. I, like, I also like the new steering wheel. Now, I have it in its lowest setting right now, so getting into the SUV, you can see it's actually a pretty easy step in height, which is good. So if you guys are shorter, you can get in a lot easier. Now, shutting the door, it sounds nice and solid, which is what you expect. It also has a soft close function where I can just kind of click the door and then it will close for me automatically. So again, you kind of expect that in a vehicle that you're gonna be spending about six figures on. Now to start the vehicle up, just like the GLE, the button to start the engine is too low. I found that the steering wheel will hide it at times, but when you push the button or put your foot on the brake, touch the button. You can see it doesn't actually have a traditional starter hiccup noise because uh, this vehicle has a mild hybrid system. But what you did hear was the four liter V8 and this is the same beautiful MBUX infotainment system uh, with so many different ways to control the system. But let me let you guys hear the V8 really quick. I'll change the drive mode here into its sport setting. It makes the exhaust a smidge louder, which is good. Let me turn down the airflow. The engine doesn't really let you rev it up too much in park, but we'll go into the test drive later on. It's got that typical, you know, V8 that's in the background, but not quite as much firepower as what you get in the AMG models. Now, again, it's got this interesting dash layout where it's got these a vent here, but it's actually a fake vent over here. I just think that they should have just put a real vent here, but you can see there's the force rectangular vents down here, which is nice. The dashboard has the um, stitching here. That's the real leather, real stitching on the dash. It's on the lower part of the dash as well here. I love the uh, wood grain that has these beautiful white ribbons that go across the wood. It just looks very elegant. It looks very classy. This one has the upgraded Burmester sound system with some metal speaker grills. As I said, there are uh, leather stitching over here. It's soft, or actually it's hard touch plastic down here, but I imagine if you get the Dizinho upgrade package, it'll stitch this in leather, which is good. The windows are one touch automatic for all four. You kind of expected that. They also kind of have a very soft close feature. They just feel really nice. The steering wheel, as you can see, it's power tilt telescoping. You kind of expected that. It's also a heated wheel. The seats are heated and cooled. Now, I've shown you guys a full overview on the MBUX inter interior. I don't really see too much in terms of differences with this vehicle and the GLE. One new feature that this car has is a new car wash mode. If you guys go into the um, settings, as you can see here is a touch screen. When you go into the settings, you can see quick access is where a lot of you are going to find most of your functions. Push this button here and it'll basically turn on a car wash mode where it will, it will raise the vehicle up, it'll fold in the mirrors, it'll turn off the parking sensors, it'll turn off the rain sensors, it'll close the sunroof, it'll turn off the rear wiper. So this is something that a lot of car manufacturers have needed to add it for a while. I think Mercedes is the first one to add this. Tesla was about to add something like this, so it's really cool that the Mercedes-Benz had added this. This is all really nice. And again, it's got the MBUX, so I can say things like, hey, Mercedes. How may I help you? Find me the nearest gluten-free restaurants with five stars. What would you like to do next? 
And you can see here it uses uh, basically LG or 4G LTE to find you uh, some good gluten-free restaurants. And you can even ask it for things like with five stars, it tells you the closest one available. So that's very cool. This is part of the MBUX system and you can turn it off if it constantly gets irritating whenever you say Mercedes, it will pop up and ask you what do you want. So that's something that's very cool. This also has what Mercedes calls their augmented reality where Again, it's doing it again. Um, where if I'm, I have a GPS inputted into the, the, the driving thing here, it'll actually show you uh, from the camera that's in the car a picture of what it's actually seeing and then it'll, it'll overlay all of the directions and the street names onto the GPS. So that's a first of its kind. Very cool. Mercedes-Benz, remember, likes to innovate here, so they're going to be doing that. Now you can see this gauge here is also customizable. It's all controlled from these little control touch pads here on the steering wheel where you can see I can change. I can go from a clock there. I can also go back to a tachometer or the speedometer. I can change the, the music there. I can go just a traditional display. This is all very, very nice nice and you can also control stuff from this side over here onto there or you can use the touchpad over here or you can use the touchscreen so Mercedes-Benz gives you lots of options here which is really cool go into the settings here this is where you're gonna also find your driver assistance stuff you can go to your active lane keep assist your attention assist you can also go back over here if you want to go into comfort there's a lot to show in here so I'm gonna try my best to condense this into what I can um, Going over to comfort, you can see all these different massages. Let's go to the activating massage here. Very, very nice. You can also go to something they call energizing comfort, where it gives you all these different options where it'll waft this wonderful smelling perfume. It'll also play very soothing music. So let me go over here to well-being and hit start. And you can see here, for 10 minutes, it's gonna play this really nice music. It's giving me a specific massage. I can smell the perfume that it's wafting in here, which is really, really sweet smelling. It's kind of just like that Audi A8 that I drove a couple of months ago. And it's just, it's very, very lovely. It's very soothing. So this is something that, again, you're paying extra for all of the additional comforts and luxury that Mercedes-Benz and other luxury brands are giving you because there's just much more customizability in here that you don't get in all the other brands. Another cool feature is that e-active body control. When you put the vehicle into drive here, you change the dynamic mode selector here to, you can see there is the off-road mode over here where it'll raise up the suspension. It must be in drive. Remember, you have to be in the drive setting. Go to the off-road assistance here. You can see you can control each individual wheel here. So I can basically raise up that level. I can raise up the rear at that level. And it's very quick. This is using the 48 volt electric drive system to be able to do that. And it's very quick to do that now. And then you can also activate this, which is the built in basically low rider mode that you get in a car. And as you can see, this is more aggressive than the GLE. I feel like I'm sitting here going bouncing my head. You can see right there. It's <laughs> There's actually a squeaking noise too. <laughs> but this is supposed to help you get unstuck from sand. It'll do this for a couple of seconds at a speed of up to nine miles an hour. And this is a party trick. This is a $9,000 option on the GLE. So I'm not sure how much it's gonna cost on the GLS, but still a very cool feature, kind of a gimmick. But you have to admit, this is cool. Nobody else in the business has something like this. Now, let me put the vehicle into reverse. You can see one of the best cameras in the business as well, 360 camera. It'll parallel park itself for you. Beautiful graphics, very cl crystal clear. Um, this is just fantastic. So that's something that very important in this segment. The drive controller here, just like all the other Mercedes-Benz products, is on the steering wheel stock. This is very similar to Tesla, which Tesla kind of copied Mercedes. Go all the way up for reverse, push this little button here to go to drive. It's got new switch gear in here. So it's got the newer Mercedes style switch gear. You have hard buttons over here for your tri-zone climate control that my tester has. You have a wireless charger here. You can also get a wireless charger in the second row. You have cup holders here, which this one also has heated and cooled cup holders. So that's something that's very cool. You can't get that in a lot of the mainstream offerings. You can see here, this controls the MBUX infotainment system. You have some separate hard buttons here. You can control the air suspension manually there. It's got downhill assist control. You can turn off the traction control there. It's got these nice grab handles here that's wrapped in leather. You can see it's got a very nice center console here with USB ports galore. There's about 11 total in here, which this vehicle actually comes with USB-C ports. You can see there are no regular USB ports, but they do give you an adapter since most people aren't really using a USB-C just yet. The glove compartment, you can see it's gigantic. There's a little fragrance thing that you can change out the scents to. It's damped, it's lined with felt. It even comes with this pen. So yeah, you're paying a lot of money for a built-in pen with its own little holder. This panoramic sunroof, as I said, is actually standard equipment.
equipment uh, this year, which is nice. The seats are extremely comfortable. I would like to try out the Designio leather seats. Uh, this brown is a little bit too dark for me. You can also get uh, a beige leather, or I believe they offer a red stitch leather if you guys want. So overall, this interior, very similar to the GLE, beautiful in terms of its graphics. It finally feels like the S-Class of interiors. It's got one of the largest head-up displays up there as well. And Mercedes-Benz has really just hit it out of the park. It just requires a very steep learning curve because there's a lot of new features in this vehicle that you have to learn. But once you learn it, once you get used to it, you're gonna really expect nothing less. And that's probably why they call this car or this brand the best or nothing. So obviously an SUV this big is going to be used primarily for family duties. So hopping into the second row, you can see it has the same soft closed doors that I showed uh, in the front door, so that's definitely a good addition. This is, remember, their flagship SUV lineup. And this particular one that I'm showing you is the seven seat configuration. Mercedes Benz is now offering a six passenger configuration where you'll have captain's chairs here and then the two jump seats in the back, which they're not really jump seats. I'll talk about that in just a moment because they said that they have increased the legroom back here. Because of that wheelbase stretch, they added about three inches more legroom to the second row here. Now, the previous generation had 38 inches of legroom, so theoretically, this one uh, has about 42 inches of legroom. Now, getting back here, I'm five foot seven, so I'm short, but you can see there is plenty of space in here. So much headroom, even though you've got this panoramic sunroof. The seats are power folding, uh, and you can also make them move forward and back from the controls here that are on the, uh, on the door, just like in the front. These particular seats are just heated. There are three level heated seats. You can also get cooled seats in the back here, and you can also get massaging seats. So basically the same wonderful front seats, um, all the features, you can get that in the second row is here, uh, as, which is the same. Uh, there's a nice armrest here that folds down that gives you two cup holders. Now, if this one seems a little bit plain to you, that's because it is, it's missing the executive rear seat package, which would give you, again, a, a tablet screen here, which is a seven inch display that's basically like an iPad where you can control all of your functions of the MBUX, which is mimicked over the front. You can also get an integrated uh, rear entertainment system here. There's already a, a mounting point here if you guys want to add that feature. Uh, the windows here, you can see there is a power folding or a power retractable uh, sunshade on both windows. So you can add a little bit more privacy. You have uh, up to five zone automatic climate control in this vehicle. This particular one has the three zone automatic climate control. So I have my own separate controls here. I've got heated seats, I've got rear seat vents uh, over here on the console and on the roof panels, which is good. But remember, if you guys really want to deck out your GLS, you need to make sure you tick the option box for that um, executive rear seat package, which will give you the massaging and heated and cooled second row seats, the heated, second, uh, heated third row seats, and the five zone climate control, which is basically matching that of the all new X7. Now, but the biggest test of any vehicle like this is the third row. So let me hop into the third row of this vehicle and see how it actually feels space wise. So when you wanna get into the third row of the all new GLS, well, Mercedes Benz has made it pretty easy. There's basically a button here on the top part of this seat back. It's on both sides. Once you touch that button, you can see the seat starts to slide forward. It actually will move the front seat up as well if it's in the way and the seat kind of catapults itself forward to give you a pretty large entryway to get into the actual third row area. Now Mercedes-Benz says you could, foot, you could fit somebody up to six foot four in the third row. And I'm a little skeptical looking at the space. So let me hop back there and show you guys if it's at least comfortable for me and I'm five foot seven. Okay, so it leaves a pretty good amount of space to get back there. But let me move over, scoot over to this side here. And you can basically put these headrests up. You'll need to because they're digging into my back. But getting back here, I have to say, this is pretty good. Now I did have to push this seat forward slightly um, because again, they made it so you could move the seat forward and back to give me a little bit extra leg room. I could actually move it forward just a little bit more, um, which looks like there is a button here that I can push back here to control that. But once I moved the seat forward a little bit, uh, it did give me a little bit more space where my knees aren't touching the actual back of the seats. There are a total of 11 USB ports in this vehicle. In fact, there are four just in this third row and the seats back here are also heated. So again, they're taking a book out of the uh, Mercedes or the BMW X7. It's the first time that we have heated third row seats uh, in this particular GLS. So it's nice that they added that. The headroom in here is good. The seats are actually pretty comfortable. They put the same kind of high quality leather that you get in the front and in the second row of this vehicle, so you're not really skimped. You also have leather stitching on the rear door panels here. There is some hard touch plastic, which surprised me, although I'll have to sit in one with the executive rear seat package, because if you get one like an X7 that has everything, that can have a very luxurious third row seat area, which this one seems like it's a little Spartan. It doesn't have all the, the gadgets and whatnot, but for a model that's a little bit more light on the options, this isn't particularly bad. I will say that I'm surprised that none of the brands offer an eight passenger configuration. This vehicle is wide enough. They could 
expand this thing to have three seats across instead of two where you could expand the seating capacity of this vehicle to eight, which is something that I think a lot of people would want as opposed to a six or a seven passenger configuration. Now under the hood of the all new GLS class, this is where we get into some of the really good stuff because this car, this SUV is debuting with two completely new powertrains despite their outputs not being too far off from the previous generation. Now, of course, we're gonna start off with a 450, which is the same three liter straight six, six cylinder engine that's turbocharged that I sampled in the GLE 450 review a couple of months ago. It makes the same power as the GLE and the previous generation GLS 450 at 362 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque. The difference is that V6 uh, V6 is gone. The bi-turbo V6 is gone. It's replaced with an inline six cylinder engine and they all come standard with the 48 volt uh, basically integrated starter motor generator that, generator that generates 21 horsepower and 184 foot-pound-feet. Uh, basically on its own it can assist the engine at very uh, certain times. It's not all the time but it does help the vehicle um, get that slight boost. That's why, they, that's why they call it the EQ boost. Now this motor is the one that I really want to focus on in the driving dynamic because this is the world debut of the 4 liter bi-turbocharged V8. So it replaces the old 4.7 liter bi-turbo V8 and it also has that 48 volt integrated starter motor system, that mild hybrid system. Now this engine makes 483 horsepower on its own and 516 foot-pounds of torque. That is more power than what you're going to get in the BMW X7 4 point or X Drive 50i, which has the 4.4 liter V8 for now, because BMW said they are upping the power on the X7 to 523 horsepower. This is more power than what you're going to get in the Lincoln Navigator and the Cadillac Escalade. Now, fuel economy, Mercedes-Benz actually didn't have fuel economy yet, but the previous generation was pretty paltry at 14, 19. I'm going to expect probably at least a 10 to 15% increase, especially with that integrated starter motor. I would really like to, to see them break 20 MPG on the highway with this V8 model. And they also didn't have the full curb weight specs. The previous one was around 5,500 pounds. So I expect this one to be right around there or maybe even slightly heavier. Now this is a big SUV, so you're probably wondering, does it actually tow? And yes, it does. This will tow a maximum of 7,700 pounds, which is about 1,000 pounds less than what you're gonna tow with like an Infiniti QX80, uh, a Cadillac Escalade, or the new Lincoln Navigator. Now it all goes out through an updated version of Mercedes-Benz's nine-speed automatic transmission. It's a Mercedes-Benz transmission. They all come standard with formatic uh, all-wheel drive, which has the ability to send up to 100% of the power to each individual axle to help you get going, to keep you going. And Mercedes-Benz says there's an off-road package that will basically give you skid, pa skid plates and you could theoretically take this thing off-road, although I doubt most of you are going to do that. Now this has the V8, so I'm going to focus primarily on the V8. Let's get it out on the road and see how it performs. So just like in the GLE video, I have to start out the review with it bouncing along. I can't go any more than nine miles an hour, but this is supposed to help you get unstuck if you're like in the sand or something. But you can see it's pretty violent. <laughs> it's actually stronger than the GLE, I feel like, from what I remember a month ago when I drove it. But it lasts for a couple seconds. It's a stupid, gi stupid gimmick, but if I'm gonna pay like almost 10 grand for this e-active body control suspension, God knows I'm gonna be using it. <laughs> but let me, enough of that, let's go over to the sport driving mode selector because this has the first implementation of their four liter twin turbo V8 with the mild hybrid system, their EQ boost. So I'm very interested to see how this thing drives when I put my foot down. So let's get out on the road here. Oof. <laughs> Man, this thing is big, but it really hauls ass. <laughs> when you put your foot down, this thing is fast and it doesn't surprise me and it has almost 500 horsepower. So you expect something like this to be fast when you put your foot down. Sounds good too, listen to that. Ooh. <laughs> now Mercedes-Benz says this will get to 60 in about 5.2 seconds. It's about 0.8 seconds quicker uh, versus if you guys get the six cylinder engine. They've done a good job with this V8. It sounds great. You can also use the manual mode here. <laughs> and it just makes a lot of nice noises. Now granted, this is no AMG model. This doesn't feel like I'm driving an AMG light, like in the X7 that I drove with its, with its you know, X-Drive 50i, which had like a lot of M Sport badges on it. This feels like it's a very serene, comfortable cruiser with plenty of effortless power. Now I do want to try doing a little bit of a launch control thing here. So let's Go here, turn the stability control off, and we'll try to brake torque it slightly. And the transmission, it has some really fast, firm shifts. Uh, even though it's a torque converter automatic, 
This shifts extremely well. I like the power delivery. I like how smooth it is. I like the noise. It's muted. It has a nice growl, but it's not overwhelming. Granted, the, you know, the inner child in me wants this thing to be even louder, but that's what the AMG version is going to be reserved for. You're going to have to get the AMG V8, uh, the D GLS 63, whenever Mercedes-Benz decides to bring that vehicle out, which hopefully I'll be able to do a full video on that vehicle whenever it does come out. Now, in terms of the uh, rest of the feel of this vehicle, it is a big car, but it doesn't feel too big when you start driving the thing. And surprisingly, if you want to make a U-turn with it, it has a pretty tight turning radius. I am impressed with how well this thing actually turns. Now, the one mode I do want to go into is the curve mode, because just like the GLE, this thing has a curve mode where it'll actually push this vehicle suspension in the opposite direction to counteract body lean which I notice immediately when I drive this thing. It's just corners so flatly. And one drive with the vehicle in its curve mode, and you're gonna basically say, oh my God, this is exactly why Mercedes-Benz charges $9,000 for this e-active body control, because look at this thing. When I turn the wheel around, the steering is surprisingly quick, very little body lean for a vehicle that's this big. This car is 205 inches long, and it is relatively easy to drive. It's got good visibility from the front, from the side mirrors, uh, which are, pretty good size. The view out of the back is also good. This has the latest driver assistance from Mercedes. So it's got the traffic jam assistance. It's got the ability to perform lane changes for you. Whenever I signal right or left, it'll change lanes for you automatically. It won't actually turn off the turn signal for you like it does in like a Tesla Model 3, but it is very much on par with what Tesla offers, minus like the navigate on autopilot feature, which they just simply don't offer. Now, the one thing I do want to show you guys really quick is the augmented reality. So let's go into the GPS function here. The route is being calculated. Please follow the road for three quarters of a mile. The route includes unpaved roads. Now, as you drive the vehicle down the road, you can see it shows you a very nice indication of where you're gonna go, but then it'll also graph the augmented reality. So the, the, the screen takes a picture of, or a video recording of what's actually on the road, and it graphs it onto there with the actual directions and you know which way to go, the street name. So again, that is all very cool, first of its system. The car is so immensely quiet. It's very easy to drive. I mean, I just find myself kind of being coddled in this car. I'm sitting here getting a really, really nice massage. Um, it has really great, excellent visibility in here. It rides extremely well. Even though I've got 23 inch wheels, that e-active body control makes the ride quality so comfortable in this thing. You don't even notice the big wheels and tires, and that's probably why I wouldn't take it off-road with the 23 inch wheels. I would stick with like a 19 inch wheel with a little bit more sidewall protection but it's so quiet in here. I'd say it's on par with the best from Lincoln, from BMW. Um, everything in this class has just gotten really quiet overall. It's easy to see out of. Um, the head-up display is one of the biggest that I've seen in the industry. It's just all very impressive. And it constantly reminds you that yes, you paid double the price of something like the Kia Telluride. I just drove the all-new Kia Telluride all the way up to New York City from DC. And I have to say, this Mercedes, even though it is twice the price, it feels like it's worth twice the price. And if you can afford that twice the price price tag, um, you know, obviously I'm gonna tell you to do it, but that's the thing about the mainstream brands is they do offer a lot for the money. So you don't necessarily need to get this. It's just a matter of fact, if you want this and if you can afford something like this, because they really have built an impressive SUV that truly does feel like the S class of SUVs. Now, the one thing I can't test is fuel economy because they didn't have full fuel economy numbers yet, which I'll add into the description later on whenever they do release those numbers. And I'm also on this short media drive, so I can't really test out the fuel economy, but I will say that just my initial driving of this V8 model, it's definitely the one to get. But if you're looking for you know, even more power, I'd probably just say, wait for the AMG version. Now, just because we can, we're gonna do another launch here. Go back into Sport Plus, revs the engine up. <laughs> oh, this thing is fast. She's fast, she really moves down the road well. <laughs> So at the beginning of this video, I asked a pretty simple question. Is the all new 2020 GLS truly the S class of SUVs now? And after spending some time driving this all new version, whereas the previous one was kind of just a warmed over, just lipstick on a pig refresh of the GL class, it wasn't really the S class of SUVs. This one now finally has the technology, the innovation, the interior luxury aspect, the driving dynamics, the comfort, the luxury in terms of the interior and how this thing feels. 
Everything about the GLS class basically screams money, and it does feel like the S class of SUVs when you drive it. Maybe not necessarily in the way you look at the vehicle, it's a little bit too bulbous and minivan-like from certain angles for me in terms of its design. I think the BMW X7 and the Lincoln Navigator actually look better. In terms of the drive, this is more of a comfort-oriented vehicle, even though, as you guys saw, the V8 has plenty of power, smooth, effortless power. Love the mild hybrid system. I love the magical air-active suspension, the E-active body control suspension. The handling of this thing isn't what I would call sporty by any means, which is a good thing because this is all about the luxury aspect. So they really nailed that in terms of comfort. Families, if you're gonna put six people in this thing with their stuff, they're going to love it on long road trips because of how quiet it is, how well it rides, how well it handles, all the tech that's in it. So again, a vehicle like this, if you can afford something like this, is really going to spoil you, it's going to coddle you, and it makes the GLS one of the best large three-row luxury SUVs that money can buy when you actually look at this thing. Now, speaking of which, when is it gonna actually go on sale? Mercedes-Benz says this car will go on sale by the end of 2019, and they only had pricing available on the GLS 450 model, which is the straight six-cylinder engine, which now starts at $75,200. That's basically right on top of the Cadillac Escalade. It makes this car about $2,000 more expensive than a BMW X7, a little bit more expensive than a Lincoln Navigator. Now this 580 model, they didn't actually have pricing yet for the V8, which the old one started at around $95,000 for a GLS 550. I would estimate that this is gonna be a couple thousand dollars more Sticker for this one's gonna be at least six figures, which is reasonable. That's how much it's gonna cost you for a fully loaded Navigator or a fully loaded X7. And you are gonna really love the mild hybrid V8 with that magic air active suspension, which is a very much a segment first. And then MBUX is one of the best systems in the business as well. Now this vehicle will be built at their uh, plant in Alabama. So this is actually an American made vehicle that's really designed for the American market. And I estimate this one, as I said, has a price of around six figures and it does make it a a little bit more expensive than a lot of the competition. And if you're okay with the kind of more mundane looks of the GLS, uh, which I would personally just wait for the AMG model, which is probably gonna be around $125,000. But keep in mind, even though this car is about $5,000 more expensive than the previous generation, they are throwing in a lot of more standard equipment. So. The Pano sunroof is standard, the LED headlights is standard, the premium package is now standard where you actually have the keyless access and go, that used to be optional on a vehicle like this. Uh, and of course, some of the driver assistance stuff which used to be optional is now standard. So even though this is more expensive, about five grand more, Mercedes-Benz is throwing in about $8,000 more of equipment and then only charging you $5,000 more. So there is a little bit of value quotient there. So if you guys are looking for one of the best and most spacious and most tech focused uh, three row luxury crossovers in the business, I can happily say that the new Mercedes-Benz GLS class should be at the very top of your list. But I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2020 Mercedes-Benz GLS 580. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.